Hey guys, this is 4.2, solving by using square roots. Alright, so last time we talked about factoring. That's one way we can solve. Although factoring doesn't always work. There's not always like two numbers that can multiply and add, at least not easily. Um, and so another way we could do this is by using square roots. And this works really well when there is only one x, or one variable, and it's being squared. Okay, um, so these would be great candidates because all we have is an x and it's being squared. All right, so here we want to solve for x. So just remember, how do we get rid of an exponent? What's the opposite of squaring? We would square root. So just like we would it maybe add to both sides or subtract to both sides when we solve, we also can square root both sides. All right, okay, so the square root of x squared will just be x. And then the square root of 25, a lot of the students have said 5. Okay, and that would work, right? If you plugged 5 in here, we would get 5 squared, which is equal to 25. Okay, and I've had students in my other classes too say like, but wait, um, all of the problems we've had so far, like going back to our last lesson, there are always two solutions. Okay, and that's the fundamental theorem of algebra. It says a polynomial of degree n has n solutions. So when we're talking about quadratics, quadratics are like if we were to write this down in standard form, that's like ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Um, the degree of a polynomial is the highest exponent. So here for a quadratic, it has a degree of two. So if our equation has a degree 2, how many solutions should we have? Well, we should always have two solutions. So let's go back to these examples. Here we only have one solution so far. Where is the other solution? All right. Um, and in the past I've had students say, ooh, uh, maybe negative 5. Yeah, and that would work, right? If we were to plug negative 5 in here, would get negative 5 times negative 5, and that gives you positive 25. So whenever we square root to solve, we need to make sure that we have the positive and the negative root, okay? Oftentimes when we square root things, like if you put this into your calculator, it would say 5. And that's called the principal square root, um, but there's also um, the other square root is when we have a negative. Okay, so let's give B and C a try. Why don't you pause and give those a try? Um, this is going to include maybe simplifying roots or having some sort of imaginary, and that's okay. So here if we square root and square root, we would get x equals plus or minus the square root of 28, but if you plug that into your calculator, it doesn't give you a nice number, right? Because we need to simplify our roots. So that's where we do like the factor trees. So we'd get 2 and 14, and we could do 2 and 7. We would circle groups of 2, because we're doing a square root. So we would have plus or minus. Groups come out. Non-groups stay inside. And that would be our answer. Again, we could also write it uh, two times, write it separate. So we could do two square roots of seven and negative two square roots of seven. Those would be the two solutions. Um, on your answer key and on your, your multiple choice on your test, and if you do like the remediation quiz, all that stuff, you will need to write your answers like this. Um, but if you prefer to write this on your homework or on a test, um, I would be okay with that too. Just make sure you read the instructions, okay? All right, so here's one more. We square root, square root, so we end up getting x equals, okay? Um, now if you remember, whenever we have a negative inside of a root, that will give us an imaginary. So we have plus or minus i square roots of and then we want to maybe see if we can simplify the root. So that could give us like a factor tree could give us 2 and 5. So those would be the, the factors um, or the prime factorization of 10. And again, we can't make a group. So our, 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 uh, 
a root can't be simplified, okay? Or at least the number. We can take care of that imaginary, but, all right? Okay, so we kind of talked about that we always have two solutions, so you should always keep that in mind. Um, we already talked about this. Um, if there's, this is, works really well when you have 1x and it's being squared, okay? And just to remember, a reminder, anytime you use a square root to solve, you're always going to have a plus and a minus. Okay, so on here, I've already done some of these problems. I'm going to have them, um, I'll probably go past it. You can pause it if you want to, um, but I'll also have it on Canvas so that you could uh, look at it better if you want to do these problems that are already filled in. The ones that are circled are the ones that we did in class, and so those are the ones that I would uh, require you to do it, okay? All right, so here's some problems that we're going to want to solve for x. So when we solve an equation, it doesn't matter what type of equation, we always need to follow order of operations, okay? So that's, um, if you remember that, we talked about PEMDAS. But when we use PEMDAS, um, PEMDAS in that order is when we're trying to simplify. If we're trying to solve, we need to go the opposite direction. So we would start with adding and subtracting. Um, next, we would do any multiplication and division. Then we would take care of any exponents. And then we would do what's in the side, inside of a parenthesis. Okay, so you can kind of keep that in mind. Um, another way to kind of think of it is, is just like you want to move what's least attached to the variable. Or, I don't know, we kind of have like this idea in class that um, equations are like onions. Okay, they have layers. You just kind of peel them off. And I had students say it's because they're, they're, they're onions because they stink and they make you cry. And that could be true too. Okay. All right, so here we go. We need to get x by itself. There's no adding or subtracting. So next would be multiplication and division. 5 is being multiplied, so we'll need to do its opposite, is we would divide both sides by 5. So we'd get x squared equals 25, and that should look familiar. We did that at the top. So that next thing would be exponents, and here's an exponent. So we would do its opposite, is we would square root. Don't forget the plus and minus. So we'd get plus or minus 5. Or again, we could write it as 5 comma negative 5. Okay, and that's up to you how you want to write that. All right, here's another example. Again, PEMDAS backwards, so adding and subtracting. Here's adding. So we will subtract both sides. Got to keep it balanced. So we get 6x squared equals negative 12. Next would be multiplication division. Again, this is multiplication, so we will divide its opposite. So x squared equals negative 2. Okay. And then next would be exponents. So we would square root, square root, both sides. And we'd get x equals plus or minus. Okay. We want to maybe simplify that root. Again, we have a negative inside of a root, so that gives us an i. And then square root of 2 can't be simplified. Again, we can write it twice. One a positive, one a negative, or you could write it like that. Okay? All right. Um, here is another one. So again, PEMDAS backwards, so adding and subtracting. So we can't do this adding or subtracting because it's in a parenthesis. So that's like the last thing that we'll do. So there's no adding and subtracting out of that parenthesis. So next would be multiplication and division. So here's multiplication. So we'll need to divide. So we get x minus 5 squared equals 4. Okay. Next for PEMDAS would be the exponents. So we do its opposite is square root. Don't forget the plus or minus. So that's plus or minus 2. So this one's a perfect square. The square root of 4 is just 2. And then the last step is to add 5. Okay, so this is where I'm going to do not write this part because this is what a lot of people do and it's where they get their mistakes. So then they come and say, ooh, x equals uh, plus or minus 7. 
Okay, so think about that. This is incorrect, but why? Think about that for a second. All right, so I've had people mention that, well, um, 5 plus 2 is 7, but one of these is a negative 2. So that, that won't give us a negative 7, okay? So one thing that I like to do that sometimes helps is instead of putting the plus 5 underneath it, is to put the plus 5, oh, I should change that color, hang on one sec, that plus 5 in front of it, okay? Sometimes that helps. I always try and leave a little space because I know that I'm going to be moving it over there, okay? So now we've got 5 plus 2, and we've got 5 mi minus 2. So that would give us what? 7, and 5 minus 2 would give us 5. Sorry, 5, uh, 3. Okay, just trying to keep you on your toes. So 7, 3. And again, the order of these don't matter. You could do 3, 7, 7, 2, or 3. Again, this is just a list of solutions. So there's no first or second that you need to do. Okay? I guess maybe some teachers could ask you to do smallest to largest or something. I don't know. Okay? So here are just some other examples. Again, you're welcome to pause this if you want to do them and then check them. Um, but we'll also do other problems that are very similar and you should have all the stuff that you need. Okay, F is pretty much as, as scary as that can get. Okay, all right, so let's go to our next page. So again, the big idea is when we square root is to um, move everything, get X by itself. And again, this works really well if there's only one X and it's squared, okay? So like here is one x, here's one x that's being squared, here's an x that's being squared, okay? So like, just to make sure you understand is that like these examples, these would not work because there are multiple, or I guess maybe there's two on all of them, there's two, two variables in each equation. So those would not be good candidates for using this method. All right, so four, there's another example if you want to have a look at that. Um, this one's actually pretty good that we should, maybe we should. Okay, so here's an example where one of your solutions is zero and one is like a number that's not zero. So sometimes that happens, like these two numbers can cancel out, but that's only for one of the solutions, okay? So keep that in mind. Again, we always have two solutions. All right, so I think we've got maybe two more that we're going to look at. So again, opposite of PEMDAS. Add, subtract first. Multiply, divide. There's no multiplication or division that we need to work with. Next would be exponents. So we would square root both sides to get rid of that exponent. Don't forget the plus or minus. And here, this would probably be a good time as well to um, simplify the root. So we could do 2 and 10, 2 and 5, and then we could take out a group of 2. So 2 square roots of 5. And then the last step, step is what's inside, that was inside the parentheses. So here, that was that minus 1, so we would add 1. Again, I like to leave a spot there. So that gives us our solutions. We'll get 1 plus 2 square roots of 5 and 1 minus 2 square roots of 5. Again, you could probably leave your answer like that too, as long as it's x equals. Okay? Um, one thing that we talked about in class is can these be combined? Can we add 1 to 2 square roots of 5? And, I mean, yes we could, but we would get a decimal that never ends and has no pattern and you'd have to eventually round. So to keep it be, to keep it precise and, and like accurate is we would want to leave it as it is, okay? So the only time that you can combine like the plus or the minuses is if we have two rational numbers. So like if you had, where was that one? Um, here, so we did five plus or minus two. And we can combine those together, right? All right, 
Um, last one. Again, here's here's D if you want to pause and do that problem. Here's E if you'd like to do that. Again, this is on, uh, I'll have it filled in on Canvas, but it might take me a minute. All right, so here's our last problem. Again, we're using square roots to solve, so we're doing opposite of PEMDAS. So add, subtract first. So we'd get rid of that negative 4, we'd add 4. Okay, next would be multiplication and division. That's multiplication, so we'll divide. 4 ninths can't be simplified, so we're just going to leave it as a root, or sorry, as a fraction. <laughs> okay, and then we would use square roots to solve. Okay, so here's the cool thing, is if you're square rooting a fraction, it is the same as the square root of 4 over the square root of 9. Because you know what those are, right? You know what the square root of 4 is. That's just, um, so, and don't forget plus or minus. So plus or minus, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. So that would be our solution. Again, you can write it twice if you'd like. So the positive and the negative, and have a comma between them if you'd like. Alright, so that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know and we'll see you later.